What a blessing it is to get together and worship God. Amen. If you think about it, that's, that's all there is to it. That's what we come here. To worship the Lord. Sometimes we miss the point that uh, we come to do all kinds of things in the church, and we have our own struggles and problems and things, but uh, when we come here, we come because we want to worship God. So uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for this wonderful uh, uh, welcome. And uh, I like to invite you now to prepare your heart is to listen to what God has for us today, for you and for me. Amen. Will you join me Amen. in a word of prayer? Yes. And will you open your heart and say simply, Lord, here I am. Speak to my heart. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your presence. There's nothing that we would rather do than being here with you. There's no other place that we'd rather be than being with you. And as we are here this morning, I pray that you speak to us, Lord. We need to hear your voice. You are the one who sustains our life. You are the one who inspires us. You are the ones that keep us going. So we are here because, Lord, we want to hear from you. Minister to our hearts. Touch us in a special way this morning. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to... I'd like to share a story with you this morning. It is a story of love and friendship. And it is a story of compassion and forgiveness. But before I tell you a story, I must warn you that this story that I'm about to share with you is not to be heard passively. It's not a story that we hear for uh, entertainment. You see, I believe that a good story, especially a story that comes from the Word of God, is a story that must move us to take some action. So whenever we have an opportunity to hear a story from God, I believe that we also have a commitment, an expectation that something is to be done with a story. So I will share a message with you today with the expectation that you and I will be moved to some sort of action, some sort of, some sort of decision, that something is to be expected as a result of what we are about to be reminded this morning. And rather to read the story in the Bible, I like to just tell you the story. You see, I love telling stories. And I love telling stories about Jesus. Sometimes I find myself reading a story over and over again, and the more I read it, the more I read it, the more the, it comes alive. Yeah. And it shows me something different, and it inspires me. And there's a new light that I didn't see before. It's just such a beautiful thing that we have when we read the story in the Bible. I'm surprised that none of you have said, tell us the stories already. <laughs> so one day, Jesus went to a house in the city of Capernaum. And when he was there, the house was just flooded with people. You know, Jesus was a celebrity. Yeah, yeah. I was in Brooklyn, New York last year, and uh, a group of pastors, uh, actually just two friends, two pastors and I, we met every month uh, during our uh, uh, time serving in, in, in the city of Brooklyn, and uh, we were having breakfast. We did that every, every month. Once a month, we get together just to talk about ministry, to talk about people, pray for, you know, for one another. And as we were there in, in Brooklyn Heights, there's this guy that is coming. He was a celebrity. 
I think it was Alec Baldwin that actually lived there, and he was coming in, and this, this, this other pastor that was there with me, he said, oh, and he immediately was like, look, 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 Alec Baldwin is coming in. And, uh, uh, this, you know, three old men, three, three grown men getting excited because we are seeing a celebrity, and I was like, what's wrong with us? <laughs> And as he was passing by, one of my friends said, like, hi, Alec. <laughs> Whenever somebody sees a celebrity, they want to take a picture with them. They want to, ah, have you seen that? So people go crazy. They go up ahead of them, and then they take a picture. And they want to, like, something special about a celebrity. Jesus. Jesus was a celebrity. But Jesus was not a celebrity because of his singing or because of his acting. Jesus was a celebrity because of what he was doing, because of his ministry. So everybody was following. He went into a house, and when he got there in the house, all kind of people starting to go to the house. Have you ever seen that? People started hearing, hey, Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. So immediately everybody started going to the house. And there were all kind of people that were there. Some were just curious. Some just wanted to say, oh, what's, what's going on? You know, who is this Jesus? Some were there because they have heard that Jesus healed many people. In fact, just the day before, the whole town was talking about it. Some came to find the truth because they were truth seekers. They were just people that were searching for truth. They wanted to hear for themselves. Are you in search of truth today? Amen. Some came because they were unbelievers. They opposed Jesus. They want to disqualify Jesus. They want to find some fault in Jesus. There were those that were there that were there because the message of Jesus was a message that was transforming their life. They were listening to something they had not heard before. The message of Jesus is a message of change. It's a message that confronts. It's a message that compels people to do things that they never have done before. You see, Jesus changes life. Jesus changes perspective. Jesus uh, brings us to a position where we do things that we never thought that we were able to do. And uh, he invites us to take some actions. He talks about confession of sin. He, talk about, uh, he talks about uh, loving. He talks about forsaking hate. He see, the message of Jesus is a very transformative message. So those people were there because they want to hear that. But some people were there because they felt that there was something missing in their life. There were some that they just had something that could not be put together. They were just missing the point. They were missing something. They were misunderstood. They were just not quite ready to embrace life full potential. So they wanted to experience the words and the power of Jesus. There were those that were there because they were sick, because they had needs, because they were just hopeless, because their life had shattered, because there was nothing else that they could do. Some were in pain. Some were physically bounded. Some were spiritually bounded. But there were some there that were there because they needed forgiveness. They were not happy with their life choices. They were not happy with their lifestyle. They were just not happy with who they were. They were in a position in life that they need forgiveness. They have hurt people. They felt that there was a disconnect between their life and God. So the message of Jesus was a message that was promising to connect them with God. So they were there too. They wanted to, to see him. They wanted to meet him. Why are you here today? 
Why are you in this house today? So they were all there, the disciples, the believers, the needy, the sinners, the curious, the agnostics, the sick, the seekers of truth, the intellectuals, the enemies of God. They were all there in the house to see Jesus, and the house was packed. In fact, there were that many people that there were many people outside the house. They were standing outside. They could not feel in that small place. Can you see that picture? And then there was this guy who could not walk. He was paralyzed. His legs did not have any strength. He too wanted to go in. He too wanted to see Jesus for obvious reasons. He needed a miracle. Do you need a miracle today? And um, up until now, he didn't think that it was even possible to entertain the idea, entertain any hope for his life. But he heard about Jesus. He heard. You see, that's the powerful, that's the power of the stories. That's why I love stories so much. He heard of a woman that was sick and how she was healed. He heard people talking about a demon-possessed person that was free only by the power of the voice of Jesus. He heard that there was hope. So please imagine this with me. In fact, put yourself in the shoes of this young man for just a minute. You were born paralyzed. Or you had an accident when, when you were a child and you became paralyzed. You saw people walking and running and jumping, but you could not do any of it. You then hear people telling stories about a man who performed miracles. You hear that blind people receive their sight, that demon-possessed people are free. Some others share about a leopard that was cured. And someone else talk about another miracle and another one. And you were there listening, all of these stories, and someone, someone mentioned and says, he's here, he's here in town. And then everybody starts running to see this Jesus person. But not you, you can run, you're paralyzed. You don't feel too good about that. But he's a game changer I want to tell you about. You are not alone. You see everybody running, all the people going to see Jesus, everybody is trying to go for whatever reason they have. You also want to go, but you can't. But you are not alone because you have some good friends who really care about you. You have some friends who are willing to help you in any way they can. And so your friends tell you, don't lose heart. You want to meet Jesus? We will take you to him. And these friends did the unthinkable. They carried their paralyzed friend and brought him to the roof of the house where Jesus was. They made a hole in the roof and with some ropes, they lower his friend down just so he can get a chance to see Jesus. Wow. Can you imagine that? Yeah. How, much, how much they must have loved their friend to go through the trouble and the risk to getting into a house, getting the roof open, lowering their friend so that he could see Jesus and have an encounter with him. Do you have a friend that needs Jesus today? Do you know anyone that is broken and outside? To what extent will you go so that your friend get an opportunity to meet Jesus? Does it bother you that there are missing out? Do you care to even pray for them and ask God to save them? Have you told them stories about the healing and forgiveness? 
have you shared with them stories of transformation, perhaps your own story? Have you? Oh, I hope you have. I hope you have. You see, they could have said to him, sorry, Paul, uh, the house is full. You know, we would really like to take you to see Jesus, but as you see, there's no way. Maybe next time. Maybe there will be another day. But they didn't say that. Their friends care so much as Jesus care. The Bible tells us in Matthew 9:36 the way that Jesus sees people. I'm going to read from the passage on uh, the message. It says, then Jesus made a circuit of all towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places, reported the kingdom news, healed their diseased bodies, healed their bruised and hurt, li- and hurt lives. When he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless, they were like sheep with no shepherd. With a huge, what a huge outrage, he said to his disciples, and how few are the workers. On your needs, let's pray for the harvest. You see, Jesus saw people with compassion. There are a lot of people, my friends, in this world. Some of them are our friends. Some of them are our family. Some of them are our co-workers. Some of them are people that we know, that we see them every day when we go grocery shopping. Or sometimes we, we see them when they clean our houses or, or, or when they are uh, uh, next to us uh, as, as we drive them someplace. It's just a lot of people. And what do you see? Do you see people or do you see lost people? Do you see needy people? Do you see individuals that are lost without God? And do you see them with compassion? That's how Jesus saw them. So what kind of creative way can we think about so our friends and the people that we know can meet Jesus? These friends, they, they thought outside the, outside the box. They found a solution, they saw that there was a need, and they broke the roof. And they went in there. There were some expenses that they would probably will have to pay after the fact, right? But they did not take that as a reason to be dis- distracted from their main goal, to help their friend. True friends bring their friends to Jesus. In fact, if you forget everything about the story this morning, and you only take home this, this is what I want you to remember. The true friends bring their friends to Jesus. Now we could end this message just right here. And we could go home with the idea that there is a tremendous need in the world for people to meet with Jesus. But the story that I'm telling you didn't end there. Remember, we are talking about a man that was paralyzed. And he was just placed down in front of Jesus, who to his surprise, I'm sure he, he, he had a kick out of it. I'm sure that he laughed. and said, like, oh, these people are really serious about meeting me. Can you imagine giving a speech and the roof start breaking down and staff start falling down and then a man comes down and sure, Jesus will, whoa, (laughs) very impressed with their creativity. But he was more impressed with their faith. The story tells us that Jesus saw their faith. You see, it doesn't say that Jesus saw the faith of the paralyzed man. Jesus saw the faith of their friends. So we have to have faith that our family, that our friends, that the people that we're praying for will get to meet Jesus. 
We have to have faith for them. We have to bring them to the presence of God, trusting, believing that God is at work. That God is going to do something special. That God is going to break down the barriers. That God is going to heal the diseases. That God is going to break, have a breakthrough in their lives. When the man was lowered down, Jesus stopped his speech and turned his attention to this fellow and said to him, Son, your sins are forgiven. Whoa, Jesus, wait a minute. These people went through all of this trouble just so you can say your sins are forgiven? Well, you see, my friend, you and me probably think the most important need that we have is our physical need. We might think that healing of our body or maybe the restoration of our financial situation, or maybe our marriage situation, or maybe our unemployment situation, or perhaps the situation that needs immediate attention is our physical need. But God sees the other way. God understands that our most pressing situation is our spiritual situation. Jesus knew that the paralyzed man needed forgiveness of his sins. Maybe he was bitter towards God. Maybe he was resentful. Maybe he questioned God about his miserable life. Perhaps he mistreated other people around him. Whatever it was, this young man was not only paralyzed on his legs, but he was also paralyzed in his heart. There was sin in his life. He knew it. Jesus knew it. So Jesus wanted to take care of it right then and there. Son, your sins are forgiven. Do you need forgiveness today? What a relief, what a blessing that is that when we come to Jesus, he does not bring up a rap sheet. He does not rub it in our face. But with compassion and love, he embraces us in a beautiful forgiveness. Psalm 32, 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Do you need forgiveness today? You see, the Bible tells us that we are all sinners. The Bible tells us that we are for, that we are for sure of the expectation that God has laid for us. Jesus wants to take care of the problem of sin. He's willing, he's here, and he wants to take care of a more pressing need right now, forgiveness. That's why we have to come to Jesus and acknowledge that we are not quite as good as we think we are. That's why we have to come to Jesus and confess. John the Baptist talking about Jesus and talking about who he was, about who he does. John saw Jesus and in John 1.29 he said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. If you... If you need forgiveness this morning, Jesus is here to forgive you. If there are broken relationships, if there are broken commandments, if there's hurt in your heart, if there's something in you today, Jesus can take care of that right now. Because he came to this world to free us from sin. Now, some people were very upset that Jesus would even say that. They say, what's this guy saying? Only God can forgive sins. Those were the theologians and the religious people saying to themselves, I knew that this guy was a force. He, he cannot forgive things. But Jesus, because he's God, he knew what they were saying, and he said to them, 
listen, why are you thinking this way? What do you think that is easier? To say to this man, hey, young man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? In other words, if I say your sins are forgiven, no one can really know because we are talking about something that is happening inside the heart and you will not even know how that will take place. But if I say to him, get up and walk, you could actually see that this man could not walk and now he's walking. Are we in agreement on this? You think that that would be fair? Will you then understand that I have the power to heal and to forgive. So then he put his attention to the young man and he said, young man, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And to everyone's amazement, the young man took his mat, leap with joy, heal and forgiven. When I started speaking this morning, I said that there are some expectations in this message. And the expectation that I have for us this morning had to do with two things. One is to bring your attention and call my attention about caring for people in our surrounding that need Jesus. People that are in bondage, people that are crippled by sin, people that are in need of a savior. Are we going to care about the ones that are needing Jesus? I am reminded of a movie I saw uh, the other day a movie based on the landing on the Hudson River of the, of the plane, the emergency landing that uh, Tom Hanks is, 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 is in that movie. And I reminded of an expression that people say when you go in the plane, whenever you go to fly, they say, in case of a loss of pressure, a mass is going to come down. You first put your mask and then help somebody else. But in the moment of crisis, and I, I can almost see that crisis as the plane landed on the Hudson River, people will probably get their mask and everybody wants to get out of there run for their life. But there was a part on the movie when I saw the captain and he was checking in the plane and he said, is there anyone here? Is there anyone still here in the plane? Is there anyone that needs help? And that part resonated with me. Because in this world, there are many people that are perishing. But we who know Christ, who know the truth, we who know that Christ saved, we have the mass already, we have Jesus. But maybe, just maybe, we can help somebody else put their mask on. Perhaps they are hurting and they cannot move. Perhaps they have a broken leg and they cannot move as fast. And we can help them to pull the mask so they can breathe and they can experience salvation. So what are we to do? I pray that the Lord will give us a heart for the people who don't know him. That the Lord will give us compassion for the people who are outside our group of Christians. And everything starts with prayer. Are you praying for people that you care about deeply? Are you praying for their salvation? Are you praying that God will transform their lives? Are you praying that they will get to know him? 
That's what Jesus asked us to do. He said, when he saw the multitude, he said, pray. Pray for the Lord, for the harvest, so that all their workers can come. I mean, I'm praying that even you will be called by God today. So you can go out and reach those who are lost. I pray that the Holy Spirit will put in your heart today a desire not only to think about your own well-being, but also to seek for the well-being of others. I pray that God will allow you today not only to feel the need that you have, but see the need that others have. And I really think that as the church embraces the call the Great Commission, the calling of God to go and make disciples, only then we will fulfill the Great Commission. But the second thing that I want to talk about as a point of action is that you here because you are in need of a breakthrough. If you were to think of yourself as the paralyzed man, that needs a miracle? Are you going through a situation in your life where only a miracle can help you? If you are, Jesus is in the house today. Amen. Jesus is in the house today and he has the power and authority to break any chain that might be holding you captive. Jesus is here today, and he can help you. And let me tell you, as I said in the beginning, there are many different kind of people that came to see Jesus. If you are a believer, God will be with you. He will walk you through. He will grant you the desires of your heart as he has been promised. And if you are not a believer, my prayer is, that you will be a believer, that you will have faith. I believe in the God of miracles. I believe in God that forgives. I believe in God that, that breaks through. It is a critical point in our life when we have to make a decision of what will be our next step. So I'd like to pray with you this morning. And I'd like to pray that if you have a dear member in your family, if you have a dear friend that perhaps is here or is not here, I'd like us to pray for your family and for your friends so they will get to know Jesus. And I'd like you to stand in the trench for them. I'd like you to intercede with me and us together so we can pray for those who are dear to us and not yet know Jesus. Would you like to pray for some people this morning? Would you like to Present yourself before God and pray. I like to pray for my family. I like to pray for my children. I like to pray for brothers and sisters. I like to pray for co-workers. I like to pray for people that I know that don't know Jesus today. But I know I only want this to be one prayer. I also want to pray that God will give us the resolute, the decision, the encouragement to always pray for those who are needing Jesus. But then on the other side, I also want to invite you. If there's in a special need, if there's something in your heart, if you need to experience forgiveness today that you come and you receive Jesus. So those two groups of prayer I want to do. 
On the one hand, I want to pray for those who don't know Jesus that are friends of yours. And I want you to pray with me. But also on the other hand, I want to pray with those that perhaps haven't met Jesus, those that need salvation today. Would you like to pray for salvation? So I want to make a short prayer. I'm just going to make what we call the sinner's prayer. And if you believe, if you need salvation this morning, I invite you to repeat with me this prayer. My friend, what I'm doing this morning is I'm inviting you to meet Jesus. What I'm doing this morning is I'm inviting you to have an encounter with Jesus. So if you have felt that God is speaking with you today, and if you have a knowledge that there's sin in your life that needs to be forgiven, I would like you to repeat this prayer with me. Right there where you are. Right there where you are. Open your heart. Open your mind. Take any distraction. And repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I need you. Forgive my sins. Forgive my shortcomings. Lord, give me a new heart. Come to my heart. Lead me a new way. I acknowledge you as a savior, as the one who forgives sins. And help me that from today and on, I will walk with you. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for forgiveness. I receive your grace. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your love. And I commit to walk with you. From now and evermore. Amen. If you pray this prayer and you would like to find out more about the life with Jesus, feel free to reach to any of the leaders of the church. You can see me out and I would love to speak more with you about what it means to live a life with Jesus. But now I'd like to invite the church to stand up. And I would like to make this now a time of intercession for those people in our family. Maybe there's a wife that is praying for a husband that doesn't know Jesus yet. Maybe there's a husband whose wife is not following Christ today. Maybe there are some of our children that still don't know the Lord. Maybe it's a friend. Whoever he is, I'd like us to intercede this morning for those that don't know Christ. And I also like to intercede that Christ will put a heart of intercession in our life so every day we will pray for those who need Jesus. <laughs> this is a matter of life and death. Do you realize that if we don't do this, chances are that they don't get to see God. So let's pray. Let's intercede. If you know names, speak those names out loud. If you remember who they are, say it out loud. Present them right now before the throne of God. Dear God, we come before you this morning. Oh Lord, we want to pray for our friends. We want to pray for our families. Lord, we want to pray for those people that don't know you. Perhaps some that have backslided. Perhaps some, Lord, that they are not following you anymore. 
Lord, we want to pray that you will protect them, that you will bring them back to you. Heavenly Father, I want to pray that just like the prodigal son, they will come to their senses and they will look at the heaven and they will know that you are the one that can forgive. So they will come back home. Bring them back home, Lord. Lord, there are children of yours that are in jail, that are on the street, that are wasting their life away. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy on them. Lord, help us to be a testimony. Help us to stand up in the trench. Help us, Lord, to be the ones that are protecting them with our faith and our prayers. Lord, I pray for mothers that are praying for the children this morning, that you will bless them, that you protect them, Lord, that those that are paralyzed, they will stand up and walk with their sins, forgiveness, and with their body healed. Lord, I pray, Lord, for those women or men that are praying for their significant other that yet need to meet you. Oh, you, only you can do it. Lord, bring them to you. Lord, in our, in our, in our places of employment, there are people that need you. Lord, use us as living testimonies so that we too can inspire the Lord. Lord, we want to pray this morning for the people that are out there and they are living their life wasting it away. Have mercy. You are a compassionate God. You are a loving God. And you care for the lost souls in the world. Help us, Lord. Oh, Lord, I want to pray that you help us to have a heart for the lost. Help us to see people not just like individuals, but help us to see enough children of God that need to be rescued, that need to be healed, that need to be touched with the compassion of your love. Lord, help us to always be mindful. Or help us to always be looking for opportunities to share the good news. The beautiful story of salvation. That only you are the savior of the world. Lord, as we prepare to end the service this morning, help us to leave this place not as we came. Lord, we want to leave this place with a forgiven heart, with a clean heart. We have poured out our sins before you, and now, Lord, we leave this place knowing that you don't remember our sins anymore. But also help us to leave this place with a commitment to pray. A commitment to pray. Every day, every single day, to pray with compassion for those who are lost. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' wonderful, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. And may God help us that as we go, as we continue to live this Christian life, we always be reminded of what a precious is to live a life with Christ. Thank you so much. Let's give a hand to Pastor Paulino. What a powerful word. Powerful word. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Truly the Lord is challenging us to carry that burden of intercession for those who are lost. So let's not leave and forget. Let's not let this just be another message, but let's take it home and really begin to pray for those who are lost. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. See you next Sunday. You're dismissed. God bless you.